G'day, Ben PM here. Welcome to my September Metal Hall. These are all the records and CDs that I um, got and listened to in the month of September 2024. Starting with Nagaroth, uh, Herb Slade. This is, came out in 1999, but this is the 2022 reissue. Uh, they're self-described as German, hateful, and misanthropic metal. Uh, that's almost all I can understand in the liner notes because um, the lyrics are all in German. Uh, it's a solo thing from Canwolf, uh, now known as Ash, uh, but with help from other musos. It's like old school, angry, black metal, Gehenna, early Burzum kind of stuff. Um, Herb Slade is some of the songs from his 1998 demo of the same name, re-recorded. Uh, the, there's like synth chords and doomy black metal feel throughout the whole thing and there's some cool synth woodwind bits throughout as well amongst all the angry blasts and the crunchy black metal guitars and the icy reverby screechy vocals uh, there's some windy sound effects like howling wolves and twangy picked out chords that kind of thing um, so it's not original but I don't think it's too corny either it sounds pretty good uh, track 5 Amarok Zorn des Lames, I think is a standout for me uh, like double kicks, really, really big synth chords, really tragic uh, vocals, you know, um, big mournful black metal sound. Uh, and there's a really long inter interlude part, um, and then it comes back in with like a bit of a satirical sounding riff. Uh, it's like 15 minutes long, um, seven tracks on this thing, it's a 70 minute long album, so you know you're in for some long songs. And some of them have that like repetitive, moody riff thing going on, I like it, it's epic. Um, but it also has that like thin 90s black metal production. Um, the second disc on this one is four live tracks, uh, starting with Ken Wolf having a ranty whinge about a cancelled show or something. Um, but the songs sound good and uh, it ends with a cover of Orgasmatron, which works pretty well black metaled up a little. Um, I didn't have any Nagaroth CDs, but I recently got a bit of a stack of them that I'm working my way through. So I've given this one a few listens and now I'll move on to the next Nagaroth album in my pile and soak that in a bit and talk about that in a month or two. Uh, Davros gave me this one at a gig to check out. It's his death grime band that started back in 92, Faces of Death. Um, anyone of a certain age watching this will remember finding the Faces of Death video and dubbing a copy, you know. But, um, but anyway, this new Faces of Death compilation, uh, Stand Up and Face Death, is a brand new one this year, um, out by Bestial Burst, a Finnish label. Um, it's the self-titled 93 album with extra unreleased tracks, and the last few tracks on here are the 92 Sonic Assault demo. There's lots on here, it's 29 tracks, it's almost a full CD. Uh, They've added extra guitar tracks on most songs, and the, the guitars were recorded in 2023. And it sounds good, I thought it might be odd having older recordings with newer guitar tracks added, but it sounds decent. Like it's loud, but it has, still has that 90s live recording kind of sound as well. Um, it's got like a macabre you know, super speedy double kick, you know, that kind of thing going on. Um, there's some spidery riffing and stuff up and down, and um, Transplant, that's a good track. Uh, most of the vocals are rough, low and distorted, which is kind of what you want with this sort of rough, loud stuff. There's occasional clean spoken sort of parts which are swimming in reverb like in, in, the, in the grave. Um, but mostly it's that low buzzy thing way down in the mix and it sounds cool. I like it, so cheers Davros. Adversarial, Solitude with the Eternal, dot dot dot. Uh, this is a new one from a Black Death band out of Toronto, Canada. Uh, they started 2007 and this is their third full length. Um, this is the first I've heard them and I like it a lot. It sounds really sleek and heavy. Uh, the drums have that like insistent attack going on and they sound great, like high poppy, shushy, snare pop pop ups going on. Uh, Crushed Into the Kingdom of Darkness slows down a tiny bit for like a more eerie, moody song, but even that one still has double kicks going through it. So it's not quite like a full war metal thing. They change it up, um, but it also has plenty of like oral assaults going on too. Like it's very bang bang bang. Um, the riffs have that dissonant black metal kind of thing, a bit like those high arpeggio riffs that Ulcerate plays, um, but a bit of a heavier sound in the mix, like the drums are more sort of here, you know. The vocals are loud, but with lots of reverb and delay, uh, which just adds to the like the layers of thick, heavy atmosphere on here. Um, there's eight songs filled with a lot of ideas and changes, and all within a 31 minute runtime, so that should give you an indication of how fast it's all moving, you know. Um, there's still those black metal like kind of dissonant chords that ring out and stuff but the drums also have that like punishing aggressive bam 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 kind of thing which moves it along um i like it it's thick dark and heavy with plenty of strange black metal guitar riffs and those big broody vocals making it all kind of sound evil and evil and evil pagan hellfire chant of forgotten times this is a 2020 compilation another evil canadian band uh with a much more straight black metal thing going on um this compilation 
is of all their early demos. It's the first six tracks are from an unreleased 96 demo, which was recorded on a portable stereo. Um, and the rest of the tracks, which is their first three release demos, were recorded on an analog four track. Um, it's all a two piece band here. So, so drums, vocals, and guitar. There's no big fat bass cutting through it or anything. Um, it's almost two hours all up, two discs, um, but it's all pretty solid and what you'd expect if you've listened to any other Pagan Hellfire albums. Um, there's much more kind of tape here, some levels peaking a, li a little and stuff, that demo sound, but it kind of suits this music anyway. Um, and it, it doesn't sound bad, it's good. Uh, the recordings get better the deeper into the album you get, but it's never slick, it always has that kind of live, crunchy black metal sound, which is what you want. Uh, Proscriptor McGovern's Apsu. Uh, this is the 2021 album. Uh, it's Texan Black Thrash. There were Apsu, but a slight lineup change and name change, and now we got Proscriptor McGovern's Apsu. It still has that Apsu sound, but feels a bit more intense, maybe. Like there's one high, ah, just in one song at the start of the coagulating respite, whereas in some of the earlier stuff, you hear that more frequently. Um, but mostly the vocals on this are those like angry little black metal troll vocals, you know. Some of the riffs have a late death kind of sound, uh, like techy and fast and strange, and some parts have a bit more of an like early creator kind of feel. Um, the drums are kind of nuts, there's lots of different section changes. Um, it's all intense and the song structures are great, it really moves along like all the time. Uh, the most familiar Absu sound to me is the first song on side B, uh, dedicated to Toth, but Azathoth wasn't listening, a necroliquy. Uh, it has that black thrush sound and the catchy hooks while still being very mysterious and dark, you know. Um, this album's a winner. It came out 2021, three years ago, so hopefully we'll get some more up too soon. Who knows? Boris and Sun Alter. Uh, this isn't a split, but a collaboration. Sun have done a lot of collab stuff. Uh, they did that Terrestrials release with Olva and Soused with Scott Walker. I really like those ones as well. Um, Alters came out 2006 and Boris and Sun played a show in Perth 2007 and I definitely lost some of my hearing by attending, but it was great. It was an awesome show. Um, you just feel it. You feel it in your body. If you haven't listened to Sun before, it's a band Stephen O'Malley started, um, a name that might be familiar to some fellow black metal dogs out there. Sun have done a lot of stuff with Attila from Mayhem as well. Uh, they play loud, low droning guitars with just heaps of feedback and ringing out. Uh, they generally wear those like hooded cloaks on stage and it feels like some kind of dark ceremony. Um, and then teaming up with Boris, another loud, experimental, eclectic, doomy guitar band. Seems like a no-brainer. Um, there's guest musicians on here as well, including Kim Thale, who's written a bit of an essay. Um, annoyingly, the essay refers to the third disc, which isn't in this version, but whatever. Um, this is the 2023 version. Uh, six mostly long tracks. Uh, the Sinking Bell's got vocals, and it's probably the least sung sounding thing on here. It's got a bit of a Julie Cruz sound, sound going on. And uh, Wata from Boris has vocals on Friday Eagle Mind, but they're less melodic and more kind of um, just kind of whispered spoken word sort of thing while these guitars ring out, you know. Just as you'd expect, most of this is doomy dirges. Um, I've got a lot of Sun releases and a few Boris ones, um, but it's cool to have a copy of this. Um, it's big and dark and pretty relaxing. Another 2024 release, Antichrist, Siege Machine, Vengeance of Eternal Fire. Um, this is a US two-piece black death band. Um, tons of cymbal accents and blast beats, like crisp, distorted guitars, very non-stop. Uh, there's no bass guitar on here, just guitars and vocals and drums, but it certainly sounds full. Um, part of me would love to hear it with bass as well, but at least, you, you know, it's going to reflect more what they're doing on stage, I guess. Um, it's still a big sound too. Uh, it's angry war metal, like bestial war last kind of energy, but a little slicker and with some grind elements occasionally. Um, there's some death metal, like moshy parts, like vanquishing spirit, but uh, mostly it's that black death war, circle blit, blah, chaos, you know. Uh, the longest song on, on here is just over three minutes. Most of them are around two minutes. There's no mucking around. They're just like, boom, let's go. Um, so yeah, this is killer. Sadist, Fire Scorched. This is a 2022 release for the Italian progressive death metal band. Uh, they've been around a long time and this is their most recent album, their ninth. Um, progressive metal can mean a lot of different things, you know. Sometimes it means you're going to get like 80s heavy metal with shreddy guitars or maybe you're going to get some new metal sounding thing with clean vocals, but this isn't either of those things. Um, it's a bit more traditional prog, I guess, but also death metal. It sounds like catchy old death metal played by people who like jazz fusion, you know. Um, Thessaling, I hope I'm saying that right, he's on bass here. Um, he used to play with Obscura and Pestilence, um, and now he's on here with, uh, yeah, fretless bass, and he kind of sounds like Pistorius, like Weather Report with Pistorius. Um, whittling all over the place in between locking into those death metal parts, it's, it's cool. 
Uh, the proggy parts of this kind of reminded me of the San Solo stuff a little as well. Um, mostly no clean vocals here though, it's those low death metal riffs and low vocals. Um, yeah, that's just mixed in with these proggy bits. Um, the drums and guitar sound great too. There's some moody synths in some parts which gloom it up a bit. And there's also some really strange sounding synth riffs in um, Three Mothers and the Old Devil Father, which give it almost that horror thing which they were sort of used to be into more so than on this one. Um, it's a different sounding album, but that's good. If you're up for like techy, jazzy prog that's still got catchy death metal in it, then this is that. It was my birthday, September. Um, so the next three records are all presents people gave me. So thank you very much, good people. I like all of these records a lot. Uh, starting with this one, Forest Nocturne. Uh, the album is Scienta Potentia Est. Uh, released digitally 2022 and now it's on vinyl. Cheers Coombs. Uh, melodic black death metal from Sydney. Um, it's a solo project for Lord Salah. Uh, there's some emperorish moments on here, um, but also the like we're headed on a mystical journey kind of stuff, you know, like almost traditional prog parts as well. Almost beer swelling adventure music parts, some really cool vocal harmony parts in there. Um, it's still like it's black metal, you know, there's lots of double kick and like big synthy black metal sounds. Um, but it's also not too much, like uh, it's under the guitars and everything else, just kind of adding to the atmosphere of the thing. There's lots of blast beats and like fast drum rolls, but also that kind of fantasy-ish, melodic and mournful black metal. Um, I think Scum of the Earth is my favourite song. Uh, it starts with a fast, almost dissident and chuggy black metal thing and then goes into this almost thrashy kind of thing. Um, some songs have an almost proggy new Opeth-ish sort of feel, but with more black metal elements than Opeth adorn these days. Um, it's five songs, 33 eclectic minutes. I like it a lot. Uh, the last two are Godzilla soundtracks. My wife got me um, the soundtrack to Godzilla, Mothra and King Ghidorah. Giant monsters all out attack, which is great. Um, just the original score, very cool. And then the other one, my in-laws got me this one. This is Godzilla vs Destroyer, right? Um, there it is. But then check this out. Keep your ear out for this. Pretty cool, I like how long it goes for, it's neat. Um, so yeah, two amazing soundtracks um, that sound exactly like you would expect. Big orchestral, bah, 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 all that stuff, is, it's great, they sound awesome. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been listening to in September. What have you been listening to, dear viewer? Um, please let me know in the comments. Um, I'm always up for recommendations and that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, cheers for watching, subscribe for more metal.